Hey, coffee man. Can I get a cup of coffee? Sure, my friend, you can get a cup of coffee. Good morning. We have the good cup of coffee, which is the small one, and it goes for $3. Then we have the very good one, uh, which is the medium size, which goes for $5.50. And we have the absolute best one, which is the biggest cup of coffee, and it comes with an extra biscuit, which is $6. So which one would you like to go for? Sure, sure, I would go for the best one. You know, the extra biscuit is also a very good incentive that comes with that one. You know, the difference between the big cup and, you know, the medium size is just 50 cents. I mean, I'd be foolish not to go for the big one. Give me the big one. Come on. Good morning, Sammy. Can I get a hot cup of coffee? Oh, sure, madam. Remember, we have three different sizes of cups. We have the good one, which is the small one, which goes for three dollars. And uh, we have the very good one, which is the medium size, and it goes for five dollars fifty cents. And we have the absolute best one, which is the big cup, and it goes for six dollars. And you get an extra biscuit as an incentive for buying the big one. So which one do you want, madam? Come off it, come off it. You know I always go for the big one. No sane human being would go for anyone aside the big one. It's the best. When it comes to size and quality and value for money. Come on. Papa, what is the secret? All the other coffee shops, they struggle to sell the big cups. All the customers that go in there always buy the small cups. How come we always sell out all the big cups and at the end of the day, we make more sales, we make more money. But the rest of the coffee shops, they never get to sell the big cups. I want to learn from you, Daddy, so that when I take over the family business, I will know exactly all the intricacies and all the secrets involved in this business. Okay, my son. You're very, very observant, and I like how inquisitive you can be sometimes. Now, let me explain to you why we always manage to sell out all the big cups and make all the sales and make a lot of money on a daily basis, and the rest of the coffee shops can't even sell them. Now here is the secret. The rest of the coffee shops only offer their customers two sizes of coffee cups. All right, so let's call the small size size A and let's call the big size size C, cup C. All right, okay, size A, small cup of coffee, they set it up for $3. All right, and the big size, which is cup C, size C, they set it for $6. Now, there's a significant difference in quality and size between cup A and cup C because cup C is a lot bigger than cup A all right but the customer would also observe that there's also a significant difference in price between size A and size C so whatever difference in quality and size that the customer sees has already been negated by the difference in price as well so mentally the customer is like oh yeah cup c is a lot bigger than cup a oh yeah cup c is significantly of a higher quality than cup a but at the end of the day cup c is also significantly more expensive than cup a so whatever advantages in quality cup c has over cup a has already been compensated for by the significant difference in price. So the customer is no longer thinking of quality or quantity or size. Now they are thinking in terms of need. Right? They're thinking in terms of need. Do I need the big cup? Do I want to drink that much coffee? Let me go for the small size where I'll pay small money and I'm happy. Right? Because the price has already negated the quality. So they think in terms of need. So they go for the small cup with small money. That is the loophole I saw. And I decided to introduce a decoy and create a target. Oh, Papa, what is a decoy and which one is the target? Very good, my son. I noticed that loophole and I decided to introduce another option for the customers. A third choice a medium size of cup all right 
that is the decoy i don't want them to buy that third option i'm introducing i want it to lead them to buy the target the target for me is the big cup all right so the third option i introduced is just a decoy so i introduced the medium size of cup which we should call the cup b all right so i offer cup a the small cup for three dollars then i introduced cup b the medium size and i'm offering it for five dollars fifty cents then the big cup which is the biggest and the best remains at six dollars so customers attention are being drawn to the difference between cup b and cup c cup c is significantly bigger than cup b yet the price difference is only 50 cents as against the price difference between b and a all right so it makes cup c more attractive like oh we're getting all this and you know the price difference is just 50 cents so they'll feel foolish if they don't buy the biggest cup the same amount of superiority in terms of quantity and quality between b and a is what exists between c and b yet the price of b is two dollars fifty cents higher than that of a now the price of c over b is just 50 cents so the customer is like okay b is better than a at a two dollar fifty cents price difference c is better than b at just the 50 cent difference and again i'm offering an extra biscuit for cup c everybody wants to go for cup c that way i am making more money they are buying the biggest cup and i'm doing more sales on a daily basis as against other vendors who sell just two two sizes at significant price difference wow daddy this is absolute genius well my son let me go in depth and teach you a little bit of consumer mindset and the general economy that comes with buying and selling this simple decoy marketing method is being adopted by a lot of multinational companies even apple that is why you see uh, the difference between maybe an iphone 13 and an iphone 14 is you know significant when it comes to quality and features the 14 may be a lot better than the 13 okay in terms of features and everything but the price difference between both of them is just going to be very small you know making people feel foolish to buy the 13 you know why buy 13 why don't you just add a little extra money and get the highest one which is the 14 and get all these features in which case the iphone 13 would be the decoy and the target would be iphone 14. a lot of multinationals adopt this marketing strategy and a lot of consumers fall for it on a daily basis because they will make one product extremely attractive that you would feel foolish or guilty not to go for it as a matter of fact you see it as an opportunity as a loophole to exploit the company you would think they don't know what they're doing you would think you want to cheat them come on let me go for the highest one with the best features and pay less money they know what they're doing my dear son they deliberately put it there they are controlling the minds of their customers so basically my dear son decoy pricing is when a business presents customers with several different prices in an effort to subtly direct them to a particular product or service in our own case i have deliberately done it this way to direct them to buy our biggest cup of coffee which is the target by introducing another slightly less desirable option which is the decoy which is the medium sized cup okay the target looks more appealing okay because the decoy the medium cup looks overpriced all right now let me explain to you the psychology behind decoy pricing number one let me explain to you the compromise effect most people dislike extremes and they gravitate 
towards a middle ground okay in consumer psychology this means consumers tend to see the middle option as the happy medium between low and high prices let's say prices were fifty dollars for the small cup hundred dollars for the medium cup and one hundred and fifty dollars for the biggest cup most buyers would prefer the middle option because there is no price incentive to move to buy the biggest cup the price gaps are the same so the variation among choices seems balanced in the consumer's mind now let me tell you about the attraction effect okay different prices and disparities results in one product looking more attractive than the other okay behavioral economists call this the asymmetric domination effect where one price comparison dominates okay for example for a data subscription let's say the basic goes for five dollars the premium goes for fifty five dollars and the pro goes for sixty dollars the step up to pro looks better than the basic to premium step up okay premium to pro is just five dollars as against fifty dollars from basic to premium this makes the pro look more attractive and a bargain because it's the best with all the features now there are various ways to employ decoy pricing that may help your business generate more sales now let's talk about tiered pricing okay products are priced at different levels or tiers based on their qualities or features you could make the high tier attractive by showing it has more features relative to the price for example you have three products product a 25 dollars with three features you have product b 40 dollars with four features then you have product c 45 dollars with seven features for five dollar more product c offers three more features than product b product b is the decoy it is there to give product c the perception of having more value and worth the higher price another way you can do this uh, is by bundling all right now you bundle your target products with something else customers view as worthwhile you know while positioning the decoy as the less attractive option okay let's say you are an online cycling gear retailer now you advertise your products as follows no name cycling shirt 40 dollars brand name cycling shirt 75 dollars package deal brand name shirt and cycling gloves both of them 85 dollars now the gloves normally sell for 25 dollars the brand name shirt is the decoy the attraction effect makes the high priced option of the package deal look like the best value and the customers spend more overall now the last one is the most charming one and they call it charm pricing although this is not a decoy pricing method per se but charm prices rely on the customer's tendency to see a price just below a round number as more appealing such as 49 dollars 99 cents rather than 50 dollars you know 50 dollars looks significantly bigger than 49 99 cents okay consumers see the first digit which influences their price perception if a basic price is $30 and the middle price is $40 and a premium price is $49.99, it might draw and attract more buyers because they look at the $49.99. Uh, they don't know that it's just more or less like it's $50. All right. Wow, daddy, you have really opened my eyes to the world of business and pricing. Damn, what you just taught me. Is something that I wouldn't get studying economics for four years at college. Thank you so much, Daddy, for opening my eyes into the world of business, marketing, and pricing. I really do appreciate this. You're welcome, my son.